sandwich shop. And the uh, the sandwich shop. The employees there were just less than helpful. Jeez, you seem a little bit bitter. Well, they're just, just standing around. Not, <laughs> there's a line of five people there. One old lady's trying to separate the plastic cheese from the other plastic cheese. And it's just not going well. All right. Oh, shoot. What's up, YouTube? This is the start of the vlog. We're here in Manhattan. It's 11.26 a.m. February 7th. 8th. February 8th. Haven't vlogged in a while, but this is gonna be a good one. We got Grim in the house, of course. We're, we're gonna have, um, what? what's the other guy's tag? Uh, Game, gamer tag? Deebs. <laughs> Deebs? Oh yeah, okay. So it's gonna be us two and Deebs. We're heading up to Challenge Cabin up near the Flathead. Um, so we got ourselves a really long, little car right here. It's gonna be at least uh, five hours on the road before we get to five California. hours on the road. So I'm gonna sit here and probably do slow motion video since I'm not driving. So cinematic sequence, slow motion. You know what it's about. This is what the view is currently. Check it out. on a low carb diet. Or Grim, when did you start the low carb diet? I don't know, probably <laughs> when I found out that I was overweight. I mean, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> this whole time. And now it that actually looks good though. <laughs> <laughs> What just happened? Well, I was enjoying this delicious uh, grapefruit beverage, and um, we were just discussing about how much sugar is in it. <laughs> and we were having a chuckle, and I just tried to one hand it and put my lid back on. I spilled it all over my lap, so now <laughs> it's, it's wet and cold right now, which is highly unpleasant. But then it's only, <laughs> as it dries out, it's just going to get sticky and, <laughs> and we've got just five hours of travel left. <laughs> sticky pants. Within like the first hour, already just soaked in like soda, sticky wet soda. I'm, the trip's ruined at this point. And then I, I asked him if he was planning on wearing these shorts all weekend long. And, and, well, obviously, yeah, because obviously. I, I, I didn't pack a bunch of stuff. Right. I packed a pair of shorts. Right. We were in snow pants for most of it. But, like, we've got shopping to do tonight. we got stuff to do tomorrow morning. Right. We'll be walking around like a... Dude, I feel so bad, like but I can't, I can't help. Wow. It is, I, I mean, it, it'll be funny later. It's not funny now. So, yeah, we're cruising through Butte right now. I got some... Historic Butte, Montana. Yeah, I got some... Of the Copper Kings. I got some slow motion video of the copper line, I think, right? That's what we just drove by. Uh, Do you remember when I was filming? Yep. And a uh, little fun fact, uh, Butte, Montana, Little Butte, Montana, population, what, maybe 8,000? Something like that. Was once the number one distributor of copper in the world. Oh, that's right. In the world. 40% of all copper ever mined came from where we're at right now. 100 years ago, they used to have the town completely segregated. Like, you had the Copper Kings, which are like, were your like elitist white males. And then the lowest of the low were the Irish and the Japanese. Those were the expendable ones down at the bottom of the mines. But uh, yeah, a lot, of history, a lot of history in this town, really. Yeah, that is interesting. There's a ton of interesting history here. There's, uh, there's enough underground tunnel to go to the moon. Seriously. That's crazy. Yep. You know how like those people would pour down like the liquid 
it's like liquid aluminum into ant, ant colonies yeah, and they that's dig the it out and pull it thing. out. Yeah. I imagine that's what Butte looks like because there's there's mine shafts that go down miles and miles and miles of branch off and there's tens of thousands of miles of shafts and it'd be pretty crazy to be able to do that. No doubt. I wonder if you could do that with a, like a radar system. Or Probably. Or sonar. No, I'm, I'm sure they, there's something like that. Out there. <laughs> you could actually get like a visual map out of the tunnels of view. Or they could just manually map it. and we're about to get the drone up. I think these are the Mission Mountains. I could be wrong on that. They look awesome. Stop for 15 minutes here in St. Ignatius, maybe 20 minutes. Got the drone flight up. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought that was some really cool shots of the mountains there. Wish there weren't clouds on the top so you could have seen the tops, but still very cool, very cool looking. Hope you enjoyed it. What'd you think, Grim? I mean, it's still a spectacle of grandeur, but you're all right about the clouds. Yeah. Um, but I think you still kind of get there's just so many amazing mountain formations throughout throughout montana right it's nice to see some different ones every once in a while oh absolutely Deeb's house here in Kalispell. What's up? Living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on over here, Grim? Uh, well, we just uh, made our food run. So right now we're just uh, organizing um, our meal plan for the weekend. 
What's so, our meal plan for the weekend? All right, so uh, tomorrow for dinner, my good friend Deebs, Deebs over here, is gonna make a pork chop ramen dish that he swears is pretty good. Um, obviously consists of pork chops and ramen, ramen but also <laughs> has fresh produce such as onions, green onions. Oh yeah. Um, mushrooms. And mushrooms that you mix in with the ramen and then we're gonna grill up the pork chops, put that in there. That's dinner for tomorrow night. Uh, breakfast, Saturday morning, is seasoned pepper bacon, country sausage, scrambled eggs, cheese, and tortillas. Nice. It's gonna be pretty well-rounded, hearty breakfast there. Nice. And then, uh, to finish out uh, Saturday night, we are doing, we got ribeye steaks that are gonna be seasoned with some fresh thyme and some garlic. So yeah, and then we got, you know, some, got some cookies and some snacks. The all important coffee, can't yep. go wrong, with, yep. can't, can't miss out on coffee. Are you, are you excited for this weekend? Yeah. Are you, Dave's? I think, I think I'm nervous, also. About why? <laughs> I don't know, what if I'm not as fun as you remember me? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you, are you nervous about that, or like your own physical safety with respect to avalanches, starving to death? I mean, you guys have no avalanche gear, so, like, we're all gonna die. Would you say snowmobiling is like probably one of the best things you can do in this life? Okay. I agree. Up there? I agree. That's it for the nice little vlog here. We're gonna hang out Thursday night, Kalispell 2018, doing it big. Lecture fan vlog. Peace. Look at that weather out there. It's a pretty tumultuous storm. I say we go out into it. All right, let's go. I want kick out my light real quick. We can kick that high. Whoa, look at it. Holy smoke. <laughs> ah. Dude, this is perfect weather for snowmobiling soon. Oh man, can you believe how much snow? They're supposed to get up to 24 inches at Challenge Cabin overnight. 24 inches. Where'd you see that? That's what Mike said earlier. It's coming down big time out there. Oh man. We're in for a hell of a fight. Couldn't have planned it better. No. If we would have went last weekend, there wouldn't have been nearly as good snowmobiling conditions. Oh. Yeah, you are. All right, so we are out and about in Kalispell. <laughs> What's so funny, Deebs? Bring out the camera. <laughs> I was just about to do a little vlog, just saying we're at a place called Fat Boys. F U. Fat Boy University. Fat Boys University, as you can see right there. Just ordered some burgers, which I'll show you. Am I missing anything? No, nope. I didn't get a burger, I got a cheesesteak. That a boy. Just playing some pool, playing some eight ball, you know. Just uh, trying to wind down a little bit. Had a pretty long day, traveled a lot. Yeah. I had about six hours on the road. You're, you're at about eight. Yeah. Pretty long day. We got our uh, we got our we got our groceries in order, which you saw. Yep. And uh, so far, so good, right? Yep, yep, yep. We're just we're just trying to enjoy enjoy a night in Kalispell before we uh, go yeah. back to the house and rest up for a little bit. Deeds is nice enough to open up his place for us to hang but, out. Yeah. Look at the size of this burger. That's a three quarter pound burger, let's do it. So we're here at FU. The uh, Fat Boy University. And lecture, lecture Fan finally, finally got his food 
Got a cheese, uh, bacon cheeseburger here, and this thing is not small. I got three quarters of a pound of beef. Plenty of. Show us a show us a slice of that bacon. Let's see if we can get in on that. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Not messing around here with the bacon. Got some delicious steak fries. Um, yeah, did you did you even add any condiments to it? Do you even want any any condiments at all, or is it just that good all by itself? It's that good. Literally needs nothing. Yeah. What's this about? Yeah, Deebs is over there. Hey, Deebs, let's see that. Uh, let's see that cheesesteak. Yeah, got the cheesesteak on order. Everything's great. Everything's perfect. Hey, man, you're a really thick burger. Yeah, you're handling it like a champ. Haven't seen this happy in a minute. Mm. All right, we're just gonna time lapse the rest of this. Enjoy. What's up, Grim? Oh, morning, Mike Shirt. How are you? I'm right as the rain. We got up about six, six or seven. I don't know what time it is now. It's seven. It's seven. I'm gonna go outside, set up a time lapse while we finish packing up here, and then we're out. Time lapse of the sunrise from Kalispell now. What up, Graham? What have I been missing out here? Well, we're just getting uh, sled number one loaded up. Cool. What? All help by videotaping, yeah? So, yeah, I just got all my stuff put on. I got Carhartt coveralls, quilt, quilt lined Carhartt coveralls. Um, which I'm stoked about. Here's our first sled. This is Deebs' sled. Deebs owns his own sled. Grim and I are renting. Hooey! Alright. I'm gonna go in and throw on a hat and gloves. It's cold. Grim, what up? Morning lecture. It's uh, shortly after eight o'clock. Just waiting for Deebs to get loaded up, and then uh, we're on our way to uh, pick up some, pick up a couple more sleds. What do we have here? Uh, this is a case for a Glock Gen 4. This is the weapon here. It's a Glock 21, which is a 45 auto, 45 ACP. Comes standard with a double stacked. 13 round magazine. This one has uh, FMJs. Uh, this one has a little bit more of an aggressive round to it. But sometimes, you know, your standard 13 round capacity is just not quite enough for the Glock. If you want to have a little bit of fun, you can up the game to a 26 round. <laughs> Dude, those things are the capacity. Are you serious? Look at the size of that thing. That So that doubles the capacity? That's double? Yep. So why would you ever need 26 rounds, 45 rounds from a pistol? And, and why would you need four of them like this? Um, well, you you hope to never have to need it. You never it's want just to need for, it's it. It's for personal protection against like terrorists and stuff. <laughs> Domestic terrorism, you never know. <laughs> you, you hope that you never actually need it. Right. But I've got it in case I do. Right. So, do you, do you need it? Absolutely not. Is it overkill? So, Maybe. are we gonna shoot something, shoot this this weekend on video and absolutely get it in slow motion? I'm gonna try to set off a couple avalanches so we don't have to worry about it, you know, any sled danger. Just like shooting into the snow, like trying to shut off avalanches. Well, or just the bullet, the, sound. the bullet impact's not gonna do anything. It's gonna be the sound. <laughs> cool. Alright, we're 
here at J&L Snowmobile Renters, Columbia Falls. Check it out. Yeah, it came right up. Okay. Cool. Dude, there's so much room on this trailer. By the way, so the, check this out. So if you look up at this mountain, you can see a very distinct line where it's like the trees are covered in snow and frost. And it's so weird, but the entire mountain is like that. What do you think? Oh, nothing much. How stoked are you right now? Pretty stoked. Scale of one to 10. Oh, uh, solid seven. Wow, solid seven. dude, I'm like a nine and a half. Are you? back there in the back seat made a really good point which is check out this view now we're down the hill it's not as good but it's still pretty good check it out check it out check it out damn it that is neat that's amazing okay i just think you're gonna be able to get all of that Dude, it's such a good day for flying the drone. I can see everything. It's just incredible. What's up, folks? We are here. We made it to the trailhead to Challenge Cabin. There's our two snowmobiles. There's the old trailer. A couple other people here. Beautiful views. We're gonna pack this up, here's our stuff. Anyway, so we're gonna do a quick vlog here. We're getting packed up and we're out. What's up, folks? Lecture fan in the house. We're out here snowmobiling on our way to Challenge Lake. I'm the only one that hasn't had to stop like three times. First, Deebs had his sled breakdown. We had to wait for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Then Grim had to fix something on his sled. And then we finally got going and now I'm we're stuck here again. And I don't know where everybody is, look at this. Look at that view though. Absolutely stunning view of the mountains over there. Check this out. Anyway, hopefully they're gonna come, so I'm gonna turn this back on and put my backpack on, because we gotta get to the freaking cabin. It's like getting dark out here, and I don't know, we just, we have barely moved at all, and we've been on the freaking trail in hours. are gonna have a tough time describing this one we're here at challenge cabin just outside of glacier national park i believe we're on the back side of the bob marshall uh wilderness yeah um several miles back in right yeah we are we are at least six miles uh from the nearest paved road and many times more miles than that away from the nearest civilization nice so here with lecture, uh, Deebs is over in the loo. Yeah, and I will say, play with me. I will say that was an awesome, awesome drive up here. We had to stop a couple times, but once we got everything s squared away and we finally got going, 
It was really cool because there was like the trail and then there was just tons of powder on either side, bumming, bouncing in and out, and in and out, in and out, and then um, just like having these amazing vistas of like all these snow-capped mountains all around. Doesn't get any better. And then you come back here and there's like this cabin and these couple of buildings just like surrounded by these huge tall trees. It's, it doesn't get any better. Yeah, it really is pretty sweet. Um, we're gonna say big thanks to Deebs for uh, reserving this uh, spot six months ago because it, it fills up pretty fast. Remember kids, think ahead. <laughs> I think that's everything. We're probably gonna what, get unloaded and go some, do some more sledding. Yeah, I wanna go check out the inside of this cabin. Okay. This cabin's got some wear and tear on it. How many years of just being constantly snowed in do you think it took for them to build these sidewalls? <laughs> I don't know, that's amazing. snow there is. I noticed uh, the property of the United States thing. Yeah. I was gonna check out a Mike D. <coughs> you immediately what? Oh, Mike, Mike D. D. <laughs> no way. So you is there? A, look at you a combo? look at look at this one. We've got a we've got a signature on here. Looks like a Doc Armaru back in 1968 signed it. Dead. 69. A lot of people stayed in this cabin. Oh, wow. Wood floors. Holy cow, dude. It's gonna be, Is that a loft? It's gonna be tight. Shit. A little sleeping area up there. Two beds up there? That's it. This is raw thick. This is perfect. Perfect. Well, the TV must be in the cabinets. Yeah, flat screen's got to be over there. <laughs> Holy These God, old pots screen. and pans, little little propane stove. Wow. Little place to hang your clothes up there above the fire. Full, fully stocked wood box. I'll bet it gets cranking in here. I bet it would be a sweet window. What do you think, Lecture? This is significantly more rustic than the cabins we're used to. I think it, we're going to be real comfortable in here. Oh, yeah. It'll be awesome. Real comfortable. As long as we got some chairs here. Oh, yep. All right, I just tried flying the drone up here. It would not let me fly. It said the battery was too cold. So we're in here, we're getting the fire started before we go on a snowmobile tr trip. How's it going, Grim? Uh, it's gonna be tough, this cardboard's real old. Cardboard's real old, probably damp. A little bit. We're gonna... Let's, looks like it's... We're gonna make it work. We forgot to bring any lighting paper. So... Right. We found an old cardboard box and this old cheese it box here in the cabin. Is using lots of tiny little kindling. Looks like you got it. Yeah, it'll go. Just need a little bit of love, that's all. Did you use that whole cheese its box? Oh no, I used less than less than half. I, I used like a couple little pieces I tore off. Holy cow, nice, okay. Nice work. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Here we're cruising, we're snowmobiling. There's freaking snow everywhere. Check out that view behind you. It's awesome. It's incredible. Wow, so this is all blazing new trail up here. 
I guess let's do it. goodness we just stopped right here and I'm just like remarking this is so awesome this is the coolest thing I've ever done I was like blazing new trails well this is like a trail but there's hasn't been a snowmobiler on this trail since the last big snowfall and so blazing this new trail just going like 30 40 miles an hour just floating on top of that snow going wherever you want no trails just blasting through powder and then look I mean look at how there's snow all on these trees. It's just white everything. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's just gorgeous. But every time we're coming along here and we keep getting these ma massive vistas of huge valleys and snow-capped peaks and you can see a ton and haven't got it on video because we're cruising and I can only pull this thing out and vlog. We do have the GoPro going on Deeb's sled, which I'm stoked about. Hopefully we got some cool footage there. To get the drone up tomorrow. And I'll get the drone up tomorrow, which I'm stoked about. It's just beautiful and it's absolutely gorgeous if I, and I mean, it's absolutely purely quiet if I would ever shut my mouth. I saw one set of tracks, so I'm assuming those were probably like either fox or coyote. Yeah. I've seen like mouse and rabbit, that's it. Right. No big game animals, no deer, no elk. <laughs> well, dude, the forest is like, sleeps during winter, the winter. Yeah. The only thing, the only big animal that's still here are the grizzly bears. And they're hibernating. And they're hibernating. This is crazy up here. It still would be pretty sick to see a bear though. Oh gosh, yeah. Every once in a while they'll come out of hibernation for a little bit. See a big old grizzly bear around the corner. That'd be crazy. Except for he'd be super hungry. <laughs> So I got my GH4, it's time lapsing right there. We got GoPro footage already with the sleds, which we just got back from sledding. So much fun, so, so much fun. There's nothing better than snowmobiling. Here are the sleds. And now we got that thing time lapsing. There's enough daylight here. I might actually try to get a drone flight in. Maybe my battery's warmed up enough, maybe not. But I'm definitely letting that time lapse. Everybody else is chilling in here, getting the fire going again and whatnot. What are you making? Ramen. Ramen and pork chops? Pork chop ramen. Oh yeah, that sounds delicious. So we're just chilling. 
We're in those comfy clothes. We're all comfortable. We got the fire going. I just boiled some water. And I've got my little French press going right here. Which I'm about to push down on. I'm probably only gonna have one pork chop. I know that we... Or should we just cook them all just in case somebody gets hungry later? We might, might as, as well cook them all. Might as well cook. cook everything, cook all Is of it. All four though? No, there's six. six. There's two more right here. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. Two, yeah, that's two each. That's what we agreed on yesterday. Like, yeah, two I, each. Yeah, I know. I just opened it up and I saw four. Right? No, there's two more right there. there two more. There's definitely two types of people in the world. People that like their ramen to be put in with the entire brick at a time, or people that crush the fuck out of their ramen. <laughs> I'm definitely a brick ramen guy. Like, if... Even, even if I open like a pack of ramen and there's like crumbles at the bottom, I'll take those crumbles at the bottom and just discard them in the wastebasket because... You only like long noodles? I hate just little tiny pieces. <laughs> you like the ambiance of the fire? The ambiance of the fire mixed with some good classic country music at a cabin hundreds of miles from nowhere. Man, if I had some Dwight Yoakam and we could play a thousand miles from nowhere... Right <laughs> a thousand miles from nowhere. <laughs> Love it. Good old Dwight. Poor Dwight. That's Dwight. How awesome is that gonna be? <laughs> wow, that is now so that the much noodles work. are short. And I crushed them before I put them in the pot. Hates him. He hates them that way. He hates them that way. <laughs> <laughs> Looks pretty good. <clears throat> it's like a lot. <laughs> Lighting paper plates on fire, burn the whole place down. <laughs> <laughs> I got some pretty cool slow motion video the whole thing though, so. <laughs> Six thirty a.m. Day two. They Day still two. haven't found us. <laughs> <laughs> they still haven't found us. No, it's like eight thirty, right? Nine now. Uh, we're nearing the nine o'clock hour. Let me ask you this: for, for for to try to get motivation to people out there, like, how did you have what it took to be the first one up to try to get the fire started this morning? How much, like, what did you have to do to prepare for that? I uh. Well, I held my urine as long as I could, <laughs> and then eventually I just decided to get up and tough it out. Since I was already up, you started getting the fire going. Started getting the fire going. What's, I, your, what's your story? I was so thirsty, I broke into your guys' water rack. <laughs> I was about to say, don't you know that you're on no water ration? No, but you guys were asleep. And I needed it so bad. All I can, all I can hear during the middle of the night is just cloud on <laughs> The fire was just dead cold, and I could, I could, I could hear you guys shivering. Like I can't do that to my comrades. I mean, I already screwed them up. With, with shorting their water supply for the next Right, day. right. You didn't want to short us on heat? Yeah, so I got the fire rocking and rolling again. So yeah, I just I stayed up by the fire for a while last night, just like a like a guardian of the flame. <laughs> guardian of the flame. Keep it, just keeping it going. Well, I slept up top because last night we were all arguing about who gets to sleep where me being the nice bigger man, I just voluntarily agreed to sleep up top where it's Going to be much colder, <laughs> much harder to get to. You're trying Have to, to, you're trying to make out. yourself a martyr. <laughs> <laughs> significantly colder. Significantly colder, much harder to get to. <laughs> I was able to get out and fly the drone for eight minutes this morning. Um, enjoy that footage because there's only eight minutes of it. We're going to try to get this thing warmed up and do another flight in a little bit. That's the morning vlog. Peace.
1925. 1925? No way. No way. It says, yeah. But what do you mean it's thought to have? How do they not know? Because uh, it probably wasn't a wasn't a probably wasn't a forest, forest service, service cabin. cabin. Right. Some big government, big it. government just commandeered this cabin. <sighs> right, and now they don't even let the public use it during the yeah, winter time so or was, summer. This was a private residence at some point, and they're basically admitting to like sometime in the twenties, just taking over the cabin, and being like, "Oh, we're it's ours now." Oh, yeah. It was originally used as a summer patrol station for numerous crews, as there was no road access at the time. Huh. So there's probably just no hard evidence of when it was built. Right. Wow, that's a lot older than I thought, though. The wall to the right of the door has signatures of past occupants that date back to 1932. Nice. Wow. Did you put your signature? No, we don't have any writing utensils, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no pets or livestock are allowed here. Good, you that's why this place is so clean. You can't bring horses up here? You can't bring horses here. Interesting. Can't bring a dog. You can't smoke in any facility. <laughs> really? Uh, smoke what? Tobacco? Anything. It's no smoking. Well, of any kind. Cocaine. Oh, what's this? Let's get this on video. It's the middle Flathead fort. National Forest Cabin Rentals on the Middle Fork Challenge Cabin. Zig's ca Oh, Zig's Cabin is closer to the. Yeah, apparently it's right off the road, huh? Yeah. Uh, cool. What lake is that? Lake? That guy? Yeah. It's uh, a reservoir. Hungry Horse Hungry Reservoir. Horse reservoir. Huh. So yeah, we are close to the Bob. Government bureaucratic red tape, looks like here. Yeah. yeah, restrictions. By the way, we are also time lapsing inside this cabin right there. Check it out. All right, we'll let, we'll let Deebs keep looking through when this. When they first saw the cabin in 1935 and indicated that it was about 10 years old at the time. Who's Whitney? Art Whitney, a retired Flathead North, mm -hmm. Flathead National Forest alternate ranger. So oh, nice. What What are some landmarkers here? Uh, there's a challenge cabin. This would be Highway 2. The railroad. Apparently Theodore Roosevelt. His ashes are scattered all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that Theodore Roosevelt Canyon? No, or no, Theodore Roosevelt National Forest. What's um? Where's, <laughs> ashes are scattered. Where's the Continental Divide? Well, it just says Theodore Roosevelt Continental Divide. So we're on the west side of the divide, just barely. By about yeah. two miles. Does it say elevation? This right here says 5,200. Oh yeah, that's about so right. I think we're at 5,200. So the top of Mariah's Pass, there's a sign that says like 
with the batteries going. And so I just took it outside again, did a flight, was able to get about 15 minutes of footage. It didn't screw up or anything, so that's awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed that drone footage. We're probably gonna eat and then we're gonna hit the sleds, Who's baby. Who's cooking? Grim? Grim's cooking. We're gonna eat up, we're gonna eat up some breakfast burritos here and then we're gonna go sledding. So were you just complaining because I hadn't gotten pictures of the breakfast? A little bit. Yeah, look at this breakfast. This is easily probably one of the best breakfasts we've had. What, what all was sausages. it? Um, got it just, got the sausage into like little like dime sized bits of cook. And then we, I'll let that brown for quite a while. You can see this piece right here is, you know, pretty crispy. Let it, let it get nice and brown. And then, um, and we added actually this egg mixture that we picked up. Cause we usually bring eggs in the past and we have broken shells and just never works out and it's a mess. So we just got these egg beaters here. This one's a Southwestern style. So it comes with like chopped up onions and peppers and everything already in it. Super easy. Brown the meat, put this in, stir it up, add a little bit of, uh, add a little bit of sharp cheddar cheese, put it on a tortilla, heated up tortilla. With the bacon. With some super crispy pepper bacon and you can't go wrong. So you thought it was delicious? Absolutely. I certainly did. What's your review of it? Uh, I was a big fan of the sharp cheddar that he used. Like, I feel like we could have used some sort of pepper jack blend. Damn. Wow. He's not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> what would you give it out of 10? Oh, I saw it. I think I saw it 8 out of 10 for what it was for a little breakfast burrito. Nice. Very cool. I'd give it a solid 9. So we're all dressed up, ready to go snowmobiling, ready for the ball. It's about to, we're about to get the day started. Other than waking up this morning just bitterly cold, just shivering in my sleep, made just everything's been great so far. I'm pretty excited about this day. Though yeah. yesterday we only got really like not even two full hours of sledding in, and today yeah. we've got we've got like five or six. We've or got seven. we've got all day, all day days days. It's a beautiful day out. So next vlog will be a snowmobile. Grim told me to vlog digging out a sled. So here it is. And I went over this huge thing and just went straight into the snow. So <laughs> I'm gonna go help these guys now. What's up, what's up? There's the hole that I just got this thing stuck in. It was massive. It was a lot of hard work. I want to do a get the camera out here and vlog this because brand new snow. We're just creating paths through it, having a good time. Loving it. Am I missing anything? It's very bright out here. It is bright.
you guys are watching on the GoPro or you're seeing GoPro footage and Deebs is just killing it and you're looks like, wow, he's going all sorts of crazy stuff. I haven't seen Lecture Fan do that though. Well, I made it, I'm up here at the top of this sort of off-road, semi-cleared area where Deebs first went and we were, uh, Grim and I were like, ooh, I don't know if we should go up there, we don't want to get stuck, I don't know, it's too sketchy, blah, 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 blah. Me especially, because I'd just already gotten stuck once. But he was like, no, you guys got it, you guys got it. It's, it's so awesome up there, you'll love it, you got, it's so awesome. Get up here, and it's this entire si hillside and sort of flat area where I am right now with like somewhat cleared trees, but not completely cleared trees, but somewhat. Totally fresh snow, no tracks in it before. And we're just cruising in and out, and this is what it's all about. Um, I'm really glad we got the GoPro going. There's not, there's not a whole lot I can do to capture how awesome this is. And then look at that view over there. Like from here, you've got this amazing view of these, the rest of these mountains here. It's just, and it's incredibly quiet up here. I mean, this is really what it's all about. Grim here, lecture, lecture. Um, there's some pretty good damage on this pine tree here, and it's right at the same level of damage with these bent strut bars and on the sled. Do you know what happened? Yeah, I ran into a tree. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> got some, got some damage to this little sled here so explain what happened like you you were ripping around this going, corner here going too fast around that corner and then hit the hit the wall and shot me sideways and you can see where he just was coming around this corner and pinned it right about there and then uh <laughs> it. whammy that's unfortunate picture yeah sucks but we still got a long day of riding so We'll uh, continue the adventure, eh? I guess so. Womp, womp, So I found a little open spot in the timber here as we're sledding along and come across a pretty unique set of prints in the snow. And we can assume this to be a bobcat based on how big the paw print is. And you can see the ridges right there that are coming up. He's not sinking into the snow, like their, their paws will grow a little bit of extra hair. So they almost act like snowshoes. And then you can see where the little claws sipe through the snow right there on those edges as he picks up his paws and he's trotting through the snow. Would have been neat to see him crossing, but they are a pretty elusive creature. And there's a bunch of rabbit tracks back there too, I imagine. That's what he's doing, yeah, is hunting. A bunch of little tracks everywhere. A bunch of rat, like there's, see if I can zoom in on these rabbit tracks way over there. Yep, there we go. There's a rabbit right there. And those are also pretty fresh. My guess is Kitty Cat was looking for, looking for some food. Anyway, on we go. We're 
we're up here. I made a decision a little bit ago. Even though I crashed the snowmobile, and I'm probably gonna have to pay anywhere from 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 dollars to get it fixed. I have no idea, but it happens. It's a risk I take to come do these things. I'm not gonna let it bother me too much. And we just got to this location, and I said I'm gonna stop. We're gonna try to take some actual pictures because look at this view. Check out these trees. We finally made it to the end of the road. This is the absolute end of the road. It's really cold, the wind's picking up, it's snow coming through the air. But check out these trees behind, behind me. Super, super cool. Check it out, what up, what up? They're all snow ghosts. What up? <laughs> Something real, but I know love is based on honesty. Keep thinking how we love should feel, knowing that it's not just you, it's me. Cause I was made to be free. What you got there, Grim? Well, we were going through the archives of the cabin. Right. Came across this old record. And it looks like people started keeping a log. The first entry is from 2002. 2002? Yeah, so these are all relatively recent. I was hoping to get some old ones in here. Still, 2002 is 16 years ago. It's fairly old. Better than nothing. Had an excellent time sipping wine. Okay, gulping. And stripping off clothes as it got hotter and hotter. Thanks to a very powerful wood stove. Caught a tan during the day. Too much needed sunshine. A lot of chocolate. Talked about men and generally had a girlishly good time. Squeezed in some skiing as well. Mr. Dogs Tellerly. What's up with the no pet rule? Question mark. We should organize to change that. Best of times all. Namaste. No. Caroline Jevalesa. Does it really say na na namaste? Namaste. Pretty cool. We skied the surrounding slopes before skiing out for the weekend. It's always wonderful to spend time with such quality people. The best of friends. Peace on earth. So these entries keep talking about skiing. Ten years you know, ago. What do you think of that? I don't know where they're skiing at. The sledders. <laughs> right. The sledders must just not leave many many entries it's it's more down-to-earth people that come in on skis and snowshoes that actually take the time to snowmobilers are just brainless buffoons that would never take the time to do something like that <laughs> there was beautiful powder snowed off and on all day both days we we're sad to leave the challenge but excited to bring three kids back here it was awesome love late and Mel. I think all these people are coming in on sleds, it sounds like, frankly, and they're just skiing on the side. Have you ever le leave left an entry in a cabin record book or log book? I have never left an entry. This is my first cabin. Oh, here's a here's an artist. Looks like we've got a, uh, a picture of a... Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that's a blue jay, or a camp robber more than likely. Not uh, bad, not bad. Obviously a squirrel, we've got a bobcat. Smokey the Bear, 
The mushroom. Looks like the right. mushroom. mushroom. The very last entry right before us, February 4th, 2018. What does it say? So this was only a couple weeks ago. This is literally like a week and a half ago. Like a week and a half ago, yeah, what does it say? Challenge Cabin Adventures consisted of Dawn Patrol, Lasagna, Snowpack, and Five Great Laps. Challenge Cabin never disappoints. Woke up to seven inches of fluffy fluff, going to try to get a few more laps before we head out. Zombie tried to kick in the door around 10.30 p.m. last night. Luckily, we had the inside door latched. We're a little sore leaving the day, but can't wait to come back. Thanks, USFS, Anna, Craig, Francis, and Alan. Week and a half. Wait, what does it say? Five laps or five labs? Five laps. What? What do you? What do you? What are these laps? They might have some little like skiing track that they do, like a mile or something that they do, and so they do five laps. But that's what I that's what I gathered from it. Interesting. This is stupid. I mean, it's neat, but I wish that we had records from like back in the 30s and 40s. Yeah, we'll have to write in it. Yeah, we'll leave our we'll leave our. Stand. Well, let's do it. Well, not yet. We don't have any. T when else are we gonna have time to do it? <laughs> you don't have to write it when the trip's over. We played a bunch of cards and had a wonderful time of prayer and went to bed. I didn't bring my Bible, so thanks to the walkers and some good scriptures and such a clean cabin. Nice. So we've 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 read about a lot of debauchery and we've also read about some good. You know, Christian meditation. Apparently a lot of yeah. people uh, dig out the window to let more light in. Do they really? Yeah, this is, this is like the third one I read. Get that natural sunlight. Do you think we should have dug out the windows? Uh, yeah, next year we'll know. Right, right. We can dig out the windows and get more light in here. Right. What else are you seeing a lot of in that I'm Trying to look. just more find more zombie stuff. <laughs> How many zombie things have you seen? Uh, what? We're up to four. At least four. And what mountain are you reading a lot about? Uh, what was it, Brokeback? Baldy. <laughs> Brokeback Mountain? Yeah, a lot. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of Brokeback Mountain. Baldback or? A lot of Tobey Maguire. What? Entries. Jake Gyllenhaal? Yeah, but he looks like Tobey Maguire. Like Tobey Maguire. Who was the other guy in that one? Heath Ledger. Yeah. He killed himself, so he's dead. Yeah, probably too much broke back mountain. Nah, I mean, him. just it'll happen. Uh. All right, so this is the whole map: Hungry Horse and Spotted Bear Ranger Districts, 1990. Here's Challenge Cabin. I was just about to say, look at what Graham cooked. Thank you, Graham, for dinner. We got a couple of ribeye steaks, got some potatoes here. There's some more onions you were looking for. Definitely got some more. Potatoes, onion, taters. Have taters to go around. Steak. I think these are just about done to perfection. Yeah, uh, it looks Deeb's delicious. Over here, Deeb's over here is was raised on steak and potatoes, so I know that he knows what it's supposed to taste like. I'm, I'm, more for steak. I'm, coming, I'm coming up against uh, Betty Deeb's right now. Sans salt and pepper, because we forgot it. But butter and garlic and thyme to get a perfect uh, medium rare texture. Let's see you eat it. First bite of steak. Little chewy. Probably had the temperature a little bit too low. Should have flashed the outside a little bit longer. We had a good caramelizing here, but could have been a little bit deeper, and we wouldn't have had to cook it for so long. Let's see the, let's see the inside of it. Um, I mean, we still have a perfect, uh, this, is, this is actually nearing uh, medium versus medium rare. But. That looks pretty good. Salt and pepper would have would have gone a long way. Yeah. What's 
What's up, folks? It is Sunday morning. I think we got up about 7, 7.30 and we've just been packing, getting, getting ready. All of our stuff, including a drone, including a camera bag, including that bags for dishes, all that kind of stuff. There's my ruined, broken, ripped apart snowmobile. I don't know how much that's gonna cost me. But I'm about to go find out how much that's gonna cost me. Which I'm not super excited about, but we got everything cleaned up, packed up inside, brought it all out here. Deebs is getting some wood from the woodshed to restock. Grim is cleaning up the inside. I just cleaned up this outside where it needed it. What up, Grim? What's happening in here? We are cleaned up and cleaned up and restocked. Everything's restocked. Better than better now than it was when we got here. That's what you have to do, right? Is leave it better than you got it? Yep, that's what they like to see. Is that what they like to see at the Forest Service? Everything nice and organized and ready to go. And so when they show up, they know that. There was a good, a good party of respectable, young, responsible adults. Right. Respectful. And uh, caring. Yep. <laughs> responsible. So now we um, bid farewell to this wonderful place, and maybe we see it again soon. That's it. I just wanted to get a quick vlog. I wasn't even gonna vlog this morning just because we're all in a rush trying to get out of here. But that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Hope you enjoyed that aerial footage. Hopefully you enjoyed that drone footage. The one thing I did not get of yet any of this weekend, which I'm kind of bummed about, is slow motion. But we did get some cool time lapses. Did get some cool GoPro footage, I think. And did get some cool aerial footage. So there's enough cinematography type stuff to make me happy. So we're gonna get loaded up and peace out. That's the vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Catch you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment.